All right, joining us now is uh, Joseph Slobozian, staff writer for the Philadelphia Inquirer. And, uh, sir, we appreciate you coming back. Uh, I appreciate the uh, the invitation. Sir. All right, we only have about uh, four or five minutes, so let's talk. The defense rested today? They did. Uh, the defense for Dr. Gosnell rested without him taking the stand and without presenting any witnesses. Uh, the co-defendant, Eileen O'Neill, did not testify in her case, and her lawyer put on about 13 mostly character witnesses. So the case uh, goes closing arguments on Monday and then possibly by the end of the week to the jury. Wow. So, you know, you and I had speculated in the times that we've talked whether or not he would take the stand, and, uh, you know, you, you warned me to, to rule, rule nothing out, especially the chance that he just might, uh, but he didn't, and I know that's his right, but what do you think that says? Um, in this case? Yeah, in this case, I think it may, it may, it says probably that um, what we talked about earlier, that Dr. Gosnell is enough of a, um, a wild card that he, he wouldn't have done himself any good to testify. Um, I think probably that was, you know, the defense's reasoning that how can, he, if, if, if you uh, put him on the witness stand and he starts uh, answering questions, and of course the prosecution starts saying, "Well, why did you do this, and why did you have to do that, and um, what could be the possible answer?" Right, right. No, it, it certainly doesn't seem like he could have helped himself at all. Uh, now, the technicality uh, addressed by the judge today, he had, he just basically still dropped three of the murder charges, just changed the designation of the baby uh, from one to another that he had mentioned yesterday. Correct. Right. That, that's exactly right. It's still um, three of the seven original first-degree murder charges were dismissed. They um, uh, basically they involve one case where this is a 28-week uh, uh, fetus that was found frozen in Gosnell's clinic, um, and there was some discrepancy in medical testimony about whether this infant was ever alive, and that apparently is because of right. damage when the body is frozen. The two other cases are cases of uh, newborns who were killed by clinic workers, um, not Gus Snell. He was brought into it because of conspiracy right. and first-degree murder charges, and because the, the employee said, you know, he wasn't here, and Dr. Gosnell told us that this is what you do if they're born alive. Right, and he's still uh, uh, charged with murder, conspiracy, um, right. for the killing of Baby C. Let me ask you this. We've got two minutes left. First of all, did the lawyer, did his lawyer actually say that it's ludicrous to say that a baby is born alive because it moves? Yes. Yeah, that was part of um, his questioning yesterday of some of the witnesses. And what he was saying, and, and his argument, rather, to in dismissing the um, the uh, first degree murder counts, and he said, uh, you know, the, the 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 process used by Dr. Gosnell involved a chemical, the joxin, injected into the fetus or the womb. Uh, that is a death sentence for the fetus. So even if there was some movement when it was born or during the abortion procedure, the uh, the newborn would have been dead anyway in a matter of minutes. So essentially, uh, what you saw was not the movements of a viable fetus, they were the death throes. What, what, what uh, Joseph, uh, did, did you see from the jury? What, I mean, if you could read a jury, and I know you probably can't, nobody could, but if you had to make a guess or read it, what, what, what have you been watching, and what, what have they been watching in your, through their well, eyes? I have to say that this jury, of, of considering what they have seen over the last five weeks, they are the best poker players in, in, really? in, in the world. I mean, they... Um, Maybe they're just waiting and saying, I can't wait to get into that room and say guilty and get out of here. You know, who yeah. knows? Yeah, and then there's a the question, if it's a guilty verdict on first degree, of course, right. then we go into the death penalty phase and they'll have to decide whether it's death or life in prison. So nothing until Monday, correct? That's right. Closings on Monday probably go to the jury maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. All right. Uh, we'll try to uh, touch base with you early next week uh, on the closing arguments. I thank you for your time. I know you're very busy. All right, Steve, thanks. Thank Looking you, Joseph Slobodzi, and ladies and gentlemen, staff writer for the Philadelphia Inquirer. When we come back, Susan Ferriccio, chief congressional correspondent for the Washington Examiner on the investigation on how it might affect immigration and other political news right here on the Steve Malzberg Show. The Steve Malzberg Show.